Hello, I'm George. This is JLR Cars. Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking Ford Fusion. Ford Fusion SE. The Ford Fusion SE, this is by the way a 2014 model and it is part of the GLLR, GLLR cars fleet. So this car being 2014, have it for a few years and to talk a little bit about how it's been like, how it's held up and more importantly why I chose a car like this. The Ford, Focus, Ford Fusion excuse me, SE model it's a uh, middle of the line there's a version be there's a there's a more base model and there's a model that goes above that but this model here has a 1.5 liter ecoboost four cylinder engine and it delivers 181 horsepower 181 horsepower seems very weak it doesn't seem like a lot and putting four cylinder engines in cars such as these make it somewhat questioning whether or not car makers are putting engines that are weak for today's vehicles uh, so they drop the number of cylinders they boost up the engines with turbochargers or superchargers or whatnot and it's interesting to find out what it's like to drive one like this and certain things go into factoring that such as what weight it has and uh, how is it does it handle what kind of transmission it has uh, how does it drive etc this car one of the things that caught my attention was the appearance for a four-door sedan is a car that looks somewhat sporty for a four-door car so let's talk a little bit about the inside let's start there the um, front look of the car it's one that caught my attention from the get-go. To this day, I find the Ford Fusion to be a very appealing looking car. If you were just to look at that front end, the way it is, it's very sporty. If you wouldn't know any better and you just see that, you think that that is the front end of a sports car. So that is a feature that I value very much. Something that has somewhat of a sporty look. And the, the smooth and curvy lines of the car are also very appealing. The uh, package that it has with the fog lights and the very slim headlights across the sides here with the very big round grille is a feature that, uh, again, it, I wouldn't be talking about liking it if it weren't mine, but it's just how it is. I'm going to be biased because I'm talking about my car. The uh, blacked out rims is an option that doesn't come normally with the SE, so this was uh, something that was... Um, done aftermarket well it's it's actually a ford rim but it's it's not done by the dealer it was done after the fact the um the curves and the lines for uh, a car like this are very well thought out if you look at the lines that go from the end here of this headlight here and it kind of wraps around and goes straight down all the way to the very end past where the gas cap is if you go down and it kind of matches the height of the door handles and it goes down all the way where the gas cap is and it almost reaches the other end so every nice design touch they didn't have to do that nevertheless they did it's a it's a black car so it's a little bit harder to see with the camera but there is another design line that goes along three quarters down from the top across both doors all the way down to the wheel well on one side and to the edge of the wheel well here on this side so very good design cue just just as an fyi just for you have an idea what does it mean to do a line like this if you look at the gas cap the the cover for it or or the gas cover rather is curved as well to be able to match this if you see right there from that angle that curve needs to be incorporated in every sheet metal across the doors across the panels across the entire car in the back, I like the fact that it's not too slim down of a uh, of a back, so it's somewhat raised up. It is somewhat wide. I don't want it when it's a little bit too narrow. It kind of takes away from the look of the vehicle. And then, if you the other thing to point out is if you look at the the the, the bumper 
and the rest of the body, the color, it, it flushes in. It almost seems like it's a single component, even though it isn't. So a very good job in making sure that there are no um, components of the car that look like they were added after the fact or anything like that. And then coming around, the same thing, but again, just a very good design and how it curves the the lines on the ceiling curves down and then the the rear glass if you look at compared to many other sedans it's actually quite long and quite wide to be able to fill that that curvature there so all in all it's a, a very good design it is very functional there's nothing really that sticks out it's out of place and uh, it's been a very good successful car for ford when you look at all the four-door sedans this is one that has done well it is unfortunately one of the situations where most of the car makers are are having to fulfill the demand of the SUV selling craze they are basically stopping from doing cars such as this and focusing more on SUVs. Uh, Ford is not the only one doing it, but it's one of the ones that very publicly went out and announced and said that cars such as these were not going to be made anymore. But nevertheless, I consider them to be good cars. I wish they weren't going away. Now to talk about the interior of the car, the first thing that I want to talk about is the uh, key. Uh, there's really two different types of keys. There's the, the key fob with the transponder in it. This one does not have it. it doesn't have a transponder. It really has uh, key that pops out and then just the regular buttons so this one doesn't have that option you know, the SE model it would have been an option it would have been you know if I gotten one that had more features that would have been included but nevertheless it does have the uh, the door buttons if I open here so this lights up allows you to put a pass key uh, basically either a four or six digit pin so if you lock your keys in you can uh, get locked out you really have a pin and you can program I believe is up to six pins on there that allows you to um, to uh, even in some cases purposely leave the keys inside the car if you go into a place where uh, like a beach or someplace where you're gonna have pockets and you want to secure your car you can do it that way I don't do that but it is an option and um, now let's let's take a look inside going inside the car very spacious inside the uh, layout is similar to some other Ford cars, but I think the reason why Ford uses it quite a bit is because it is a layout that is functional. Let me start the car in, like I mentioned before, to start the car, it does use the regular key to start it for an ignition. And the first thing that I like to point out is the uh, screen for the instrument cr cluster has only the one analog gauge in the middle and then the the screens on the side are dual screens one thing that I liked in terms of attention to detail is the colors on those two screens which by the way are configurable that is not an accident the the green color is a color that is used for navigation the blue color is normally used for climate but they they change it based on what feature you want to put in there but this color on the right if i scroll through here on the steering wheel i have these buttons to scroll through it and i scroll through let's say phone and it's going to turn a yellow yellowish orange color if i put entertainment it's going to turn a reddish color and then the climate that i was talking about it turns blue that actually matches the colors of the infotainment system. So the infotainment system, which is the sync system that Ford has, this is version two. And this, when this version came out, so when I reviewed my truck, it had version one, which was quite good. This version two, and by the way, sync is up to version three, but this version two, what I liked about it was, or what I still do like about it is the, colors so they color coded the different areas so they did navigation in green and that's when the upper right hand corner is green uh, climate has that blue bar and depends on what you select if i select phone which kind of paints that yellowish orange color or entertainment and then it paints the, the reddish color that's what matches the screens here on the side when i uh, let me get out of navigate uh just uh climate and go into navigation and I had it under entertainment so then 
it matches that. I think that that was very well thought out. And when it comes to structure and something that is well organized, they did a good job there. The uh, amount of gauges that you can see on the left hand side can also be changed. Here is just showing the, uh, the tachometer, the fuel gauge, and then the temperature gauge. But I can actually change what I want to display, whether I want to display more or less, is completely up to me. Uh, in addition to some of the other information that you can put related to trip and fuel economy and whatnot So very configurable very good and easy to use All in all the uh, the car is very spacious the interior although it does use hard plastics It is it doesn't look cheap. It does have a little bit of texture to it. It is very smooth there are not any any components that look out of place so it was well designed the um, the accents with the uh, uh, the metallic pieces that uh, basically mesh with the the wooden panels like on the doors and whatnot are, are also very well made let's take a look in the back seat oh remember this chair in the front is set up for my height and in addition to being set up for my height it retracts about another three or four inches when I turn the engine off and I exit the vehicle this front seat will move back another like I said three or four inches so if you look at the passenger side and then compare that to my uh, seating position where I still have a few inches here uh, but that one that is not all the way back and still has quite a bit of space it still has considerable amount of uh, wiggle room there for any passenger. The, the seats are very wide and spacious. They recess a little bit to show um, or, or to wrap around where you sit as well. Not, not just on, on the bottom, but as well as the top. The uh, headrests are extendable. The uh, center area has the um, uh, cup holders and uh, the armrest area that are for me and my belief for any car any four-door car or suv it is now expected the uh, front area the back area also has some ac vents which is something that i also expect in every car re regardless of how it is packaged the um it does have the sunroof the retractor uh, and moon roof so uh again it only opens just the front area uh, hooks adjustable seat belts and then it's got the uh, because it doesn't have a dome light here it's got the map lights in the front and then here in the back it has another dome light there in the middle of the back which you can just press there and and connect so all in all very spacious very comfortable for um, having even a, a passenger in the in the center it is Quite spacious the floor even though it does have a little bit of a hump there in the middle it is not very high so you don't have to worry about how you're gonna fit your your, your legs your feet and when, when you're sitting in the middle but it works I think to point out is that the locking mechanism in, in this car like many other cars don't have that little mechanical um, nozzle that sticks out of the door instead what it has nowadays is uh, an LED light that turns red when it's locked here because the door is open it's not showing anything and um, and then it will not blink when it's unlocked so you know when the when the car is locked in that mechanism let's take now a look at the trunk area so you can open it with the key you can open it with the remote control and here with this one you just have to hit it twice and it will open and it is a gigantic trunk if i were to give you a reference on how big this trunk is i would tell you that you could fit probably about three golf bags in the bottom and put another three golf bags on top of that and you would still have the areas here in the corners where you can put tools and things of that nature it does have a um, small spare right under here and keep a little bit of rags and junk here on the side but again it's it is enormous this car is um to think that there's cars bigger than this means you really need uh an enormous amount of space so you can even take this on a trip not a problem 
first impressions when it comes to acceleration for a four cylinder engine I didn't expect that it would be as responsive as an engine as it is when I punch it I do get a little bit of a, a, a punchy type of uh, feeling because it's turbocharged you feel when that turbo kicks in the overall ride quality is quite good it's very smooth it was meant to have a very good ride quality and the feeling of the steering wheel is a very strong and responsive steering it is a steering wheel that may not be as precise of some higher-end cars but it gives you the necessary feeling for a four-door sedan that you normally wouldn't expect on a car of this price class or price category the view of the car is excellent you are surrounded by glass the front window is big and wide and the view from the dashboard above the hood down to the ground is considerably good for uh, a, a non-SUV vehicle. If I look around, there is a good view of all the glass that I'm surrounded. So it's quite good. I can tell you that it's not going to be an issue if driving around uh, looking for uh, let's say a, a place to park and making sure that there's no blind spot having said that there is a 3d camera not a 3d camera but a backup camera uh, which helps somewhat since it's mandated now anyway but it does provide good visibility uh, nevertheless you know as being a driver and having to be cognizant of the style of looking around and looking for blind spots you still need to do that the transmission feel is very smooth it's almost not perceptible unless you're really punching the car and then you can feel it shift the shifter itself is a very strong wide knob as you can see there and it does have a very positive feel when it is engaged it's got the um, this engage button and then it's got the buttons on the side these buttons on the side are the ones that allow you to do the manual shifting there are no paddle shifters on the car so it, again one of my pet peeves is when it's awkward when there is a manual mode yet there is no paddle shifters it makes it very difficult to conveniently shift gears by the pressing a button down there on the on the shifter but nevertheless it is uh, uh, it is an option that is there and it does a good job in terms of the creature comforts and feeling that the driving position is very adjustable the seats allow you to go forward and back lumbar support uh, tilts the bottom etc it allows you to find an ideal driving position I can extend their driver's seat beyond the reach of my legs so this is a car that a very tall individual could drive in good comfort the uh, these seats are leather seats and they uh, feel quite comfortable they are durable for a car that is now five years old and the controls if I look at the center stack the controls don't have a whole lot of buttons in it you have the center screen that has many of the functions that you can do then the only buttons that you have in the center are the ones that provide temperature controls and such and a few um, uh, buttons on the bottom so not a whole lot of buttons there and they're easy to reach they are quick to find uh, really don't have any complaints when it comes to that level of ergonomics when it comes down to the amount of storage and the amount of capacity you have your two cup holders here in the center the center stack which is fairly big the uh, center compartment for coins and you know another compartment there for more space with controls for USB and such you do have the uh, glove compartment which is a fairly good size knowing 
knowing that it is a comfortable car, knowing that it is uh, fairly punchy for a small engine, knowing that it's very spacious, this car checks quite a few boxes. It is a car that doesn't cost too much. It is a car that it has good capacity, not being an SUV, it's in the mid-size category. It is a car that provides good visibility, fairly good ergonomics. Although the performance is not meant to be sports-like performance, it is, in my view, acceptable performance. It is also a car that is very good on your wallet if you're needing to insure. And although we have an idea of what are the factors that make insurance rate high or low, uh, we can only speculate on what are all of those factors. But again, easy on the wallet in terms of price, easy on the wallet in terms of insurance. Fairly safe vehicle, it has a very good safe record. So uh, no complaints there either. So all in all, the driving experience is a positive driving experience. It's the type of car that I could take on a long drive with three other people comfortably. And I'm not gonna feel tired or stressed and coupled with the price point and all of the other features that I talked about there is a place for this car for a very broad range of potential customers so um, the only thing that I would probably say is not working towards um, increasing the market share of this car or any other car for that matter is the fact that SUVs are so popular nowadays so um, hence the reason why Ford and some other automakers are favoring the manufacturer of SUVs over Ford or sedans for that matter but uh, it's a very enjoyable experience after looking at the driving experience and looking at all of the different boxes that a car such as this would check in terms of how spacious it is in terms of the comfort that it has, the ergonomics, the acceptable performance. I would probably say better performance than I would think for a four-door sedan that is not expected to be as high-performing as this one. There are engines that are giving it even more power than this. There is a 2.0 liter engine. There are some engines that you can get with even better configuration that will make it even punchier. So all in all it's a car like i said it checks many boxes the one box that i like the most though is the overall cost of ownership the cost of uh, the overall cost of of buying the car was low and like i mentioned before even the price to insure the cost of insurance is very low in a car like this Many insurances don't publish what they charge on different cars, but this is a car that is in a segment that maybe because of a safety record, not as many accidents, or maybe because of the people who buy it, it's a different type of folks who drive it. Whatever the case is, if you own a car like this, you're not gonna pay as much. And that is a very big box to check. It has held up very well over the years. Um, it really is nothing mechanically that I can say it has had over all these years, five years going on now. And it's held up in terms of the interior and the exterior. Maybe a few little scratches and uh, just uh, little chips from rocks and such that are expected on any car, which is part of normal wear and tear. But all in all, very good at all. These are the reasons why this car is part of the fleet and part of the reason why it's not going anywhere. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no reason to change it. And I will continue to own it as long as it keeps running. My name is George. This is GLR Cars. And as always, drive safe.